I'm uh, Glyn Edwards in, in the Punch and Judy world. That makes me Professor Glyn Edwards, but I can explain that later. Um, I'm a Punch and Judy performer, but my, my organization is called the Fedora Group. That's Fedora as in hat. It used to be the Federation of Regional Artists, but we, we found Fedora worked as a good abbreviation. We were fascinated by uh, traditional puppet theatre, traditional entertainments, particularly traditional seaside entertainments, because my parents had been seaside entertainers before the Second World War. Uh, and we, we like to celebrate that heritage. Western obviously had a huge uh, Punch and Judy heritage, which is why our exhibition came to the Western. Um, and we look for uh, funding from the Heritage Lottery Fund or from the Arts Council to, to do things which celebrate what we think is an important and often undervalued part of uh, British culture. It's, it's the sort of low level, um, everybody knows of it, but it tends to get overlooked and dismissed. So. That's the, the long version of um, who I am. And I've been a Punch and Judy performer for six decades now. So I, I know my Punch and Judy history uh, and thoroughly enjoy celebrating it. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, so uh, just to hark back to something that you did touch on, um, your organization um, set up an exhibition within Western Museum for a short while. Um, one, could, could you tell us, you know, why you came to Western, why you think places like Western are so important to the punch and duty, I don't know, is it trade, industry, entertainment? Um, I'm, I'm not sure how to, in, in, you know, how, how to put that into under an umbrella, so to speak. Well, Punch and Judy is, is synonymous with the seaside for complicated, well, no, actually not very complicated reasons, quite simple reasons. Western is obviously one of the key seaside resorts, certainly um, going back into history. So Mr. Punch has always been associated with Western um, and it seemed uh, a good place to say, hey, uh, Western, how would you like to take our new Punch and Judy touring exhibition? Um, the Stadden family were famous for being on Western Beach for years, and I think there are still Stadden relatives. I, I met some when I visited the exhibition. Um, I perform Punch and Judy currently in Brighton, and uh, one of the Stadden family uh, had also performed in Brighton. Um, and I think married into the Carcass family who were Brighton's Punch and Judy dynasty. Uh, it's not really a dynastic thing uh, these days. It, it's one of those things where I guess like showmen or actors or, or it, it tends to sort of stay within a group because you've grown up with it around you and, and you tend to pick it up. But anybody can take up Punch and Judy these days. So Western um, has had uh, recently Professor Paul Wheeler there. It had for a number of years, uh, Professor Rod Burnett, who's no longer with us, but was one of the great punch performers. So uh, celebrating Mr. Punch, who himself is so old, even the Victorians thought he was old, celebrating it in Western um, seemed a very logical thing to do. And we're delighted to say, uh, it was seems to have been enjoyed all round. I see. So with, with Punch and Judy, as you just touched on, um, it goes back a long, long time. Um, it, does it evolve, you know, in you've been involved for six decades. Have you seen an evolution of Punch and Judy since your early days until today? Mr. Punch is one of those, uh, you can think of him as you can think of Robin Hood. There are certain things that go with Robin Hood. He's, he robs from the uh, rich and gives to the poor. He uses a bow and arrow. 
his, his arch enemy is the Sheriff of Nottingham, but you can do that in Disney style. You can do that as you know, Mel Brooks, Robin Hood, men in tights. You can do the Errol Flynn swashbuckling version. The story uh, is, is sort of one of a character who takes no notice of authority. And in the end, when the devil comes for him, uh, he has no respect for that either and defeats the devil. So there's a kind of universality underneath it all. But I, as you say, the seven-year-old is al almost your target audience, but you also need to speak to the mums and the dads, the aunties, uncles, grannies and grandpies um, to let the seven-year-old actually watch it. So if they understand what the seven-year-old is watching, and they obviously, under, a bit like you said with pantomime, there are jokes in pantomime, that the seven-year-old just doesn't get, but mum and dad are, sat, are almost wet in themselves. It, it's one of those um, entertainments that is enjoyed across the generations, that I'll see the grandparents, the parents, and the kids all watching together. The grandparents are reminding the, their own adult children, oh, we used to take you to see that. Yeah. Yeah. They're teaching the, the youngsters that when Mr. Punch says, where is he now? You shout, he's behind you. And when Punch says, oh, no, he isn't. They're, oh, yes, he is. It's, a, it's a, a generational thing that they enjoy and share together whilst seeing the, the youngest kid howling with laughter uncontrollably. And, and they do. They really howl with laughter. And that, that's the fun in doing the show. You, you don't do it, you know, for anything other than to bring smiles and laughs to to young audiences. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it must be a wonderful way to to make a living. To be honest, uh, you know, to three, four times a day, well, however often you perform, to hear that laughter, it is, um, it, you know, because of something that you are doing, albeit hidden in your little booth, but. You, you can still hear all that laughter and get that that reaction. Yeah, it is. It, it's what it's like surfing on a wave of children's laughter. It, it's really it really is sort of life enhancing.